Hello guys, this is me, Dr. Kashan Kaset. We were discussing the problem of the blood disorder in which we have discussed the sickle cell syndrome, the sickle cell anemia, the process involved in the sickling and the pathogenesis involved in it. So the previous lecture was all about the pathogenesis and the sickling process. Now moving on, we will discuss here the clinical feature, investigations and the treatment plan for this problem. So coming to the clinical feature of this problem. The sickle cell anemic patient will usually appear with the symptoms uh, after the 6 month life and when most of the hemoglobin F is replaced by HBS. The first clinical feature here is the anemia. Anemia occurs in these patients because of the sickling process which is the destruction of the RBC occurs due to the deformed shape of the RBCs. So the anemia will occur in these patients. The chronic hemolysis will result in the HB level which is ranging between 6 to 8 gram per deciliter in these patients. So due to the acute hemolysis which may be occurring due to uh, splenic sequestration and uh, bone marrow aplasia due to uh, usage of any drug infection or due to 6 GDP deficiency. These are the factors which is resulting the hemolysis of the RBCs. The second clinical feature here is the vasoocclusive crisis. This is also called the vasoocclusive phenomena in which there will be the obstruction of the small capillary and the blood flow from the capillary will be obstructed due to the presence of the sickle cells. So uh, early presentation in these patients will be the pain in the hand and feet. The bones are also involved like uh, humerus, femur, uh, rib cage and other bones are also involved. So there will be the obstruction of the vessels which will result in the damage of the organ and there will be the infarct that will be micro infarct or there can be also a macro infarct. Micro infarct will affect the chest abdomen and the joints and it is the cause of the recurrent pain in these type of the patients. The macro infarcts will affect the spleen, liver, kidney, CNS and the skin will be also involved. So these will affect the organs and will result in the functional damage to these organs. The third one here is the acute chest syndrome which is affecting the 30% of the patient and there will be the pulmonary hypertension and the lung diseases which are the most common cause of the death in the adults having sickle cell syndrome. So acute chest syndrome occurs due to the infection or there will be the fat embolism which can occur from the necrotic bone which is due to the sickle cell disease. So this acute chest syndrome will result in the presentation like chest pain, there will be the hypoxia and the x-ray will show consolidation. The fourth one here is the pulmonary hypertension which is defined as the pulmonary artery pressure greater than 25 mm of HD and it is occurring in 10% of the patient. The final one here is the long term problems which is involving the leg ulcers, bone, cardiac problems involving the cardiomegaly and there will be the infarction and the eye which is involving the background retinopathy, liver and there will be the growth and developmental problem as well in this condition. Now we will discuss the investigation and the management or a treatment plan for this problem. So coming to the investigations, the normal investigation involve the blood count. The blood count will show the HB level which is ranging between 6 to 8 gram per deciliter. While there will be the increased reticulocyte count that is 10 to 20 percent which is very high in this condition. Blood film will show the sickling process which is a feature of the splenomegaly. The third one here is the HB electrophoresis. This is very important because it is confirming the diagnosis and this is done and it will show there will be no HBA while there will be the HBF level which is slightly higher that is 2 to 20 percent. But coming to the HBSS which is the sickle cell hemoglobin which is ranging between 80 to 95 percent. This is showing that the patient is sickle cell anemic. So coming to the management, the management involved the precipitating factor we have discussed earlier should be avoided and the complication should be treated as early as possible. So coming to the painful attacks, the acute painful attacks 
requires the IV fluid therapy and there will be the analgesic usage which will reduce the painful attacks. The oxygen and antibiotics are only given in a specific conditions and it is indicated in the conditions like uh, the problem of the lung disorders or there can be other organ disorders. In these conditions the antibiotics are recommended. The third one is the extremely painful crisis which requires the strong analgesic or the there will be the use of morphine which is the drug of a choice in this condition. The morphine is used for the pain relief and for the mild pain there will be the use of NSAID, codeine or the parastamol. So these are the medication given to sickle cell anemic patients. Uh, the incentive spirometry is usually done in the patient which are admitted to hospital and there will be the also use of penicillin 500 mg daily for infections prophylaxis. Folic acid is given to all the patients who are facing the problem of the intravascular hemolysis. So these are the medication used in these patients. So we are done with the sickle cell anemia. This is all about today. Thank you very much for listening.